Hi, I'm Randy Wicker. Right here are three plots that I bought to be my final resting place in Washington, D.C.'s Congressional Cemetery. And you know, we don't do these kind of things generally because people, even my friends, oh, don't talk to me about dying, Randy. You know, you're healthy, you're 71 years old, you got a long time to go. But if you don't plan, if you don't have the arrangements made, if you don't have your will written, if you don't have your grave plot bought, if you don't have an understanding with your lover, I just met a gentleman, he and his lover have been together. They haven't bought a site here, but they both walk the dogs here. They've been together for 17 years. They obviously probably plan on being buried together, but they haven't done anything. So it's very important to write your will, to buy your property, to let people around you know and leave it in writing what you want done when you die. Maybe it's some people it doesn't matter. Quentin Chris was cremated and had his ashes scattered over the borough of Manhattan. I've had friends that had their ashes thrown at sea. Another a lover of mine had his ashes thrown where the sun met the water out the horizon off the coast of Florida where he thought it was so beautiful. But if you want to have a final resting place where maybe later relatives or friends or admirers can come visit, you need to have a piece of land and a monument. I wish Sylvia Rivera had one. Now, Randy, you are from born in Baltimore, had a shop in New York City, live in New Jersey. Why burial in Washington, D.C.? I saw a documentary on this in C-SPAN, and all these people like Jagger Hoover and Matt Levick, and I said, God, that's a historic landmark, and it was almost in disrepair, 18 blocks from the Capitol. It's, a, it's going to be preserved forever, you know, and it's someplace where if everyone comes to Washington, D.C., it's the center of our country. So if you're buried here, you know, like if you were in Mara of Leonard Makovic, which I am, he has a grave site over there, you can come out here. I asked people on Memorial Day, get some gay veterans to go out and lay flowers at his grave. I asked Frank Kameny to do that, he wouldn't do it because he used to have arguments with Makovic about closing the baths in San Francisco, which Makovic favored and stood up to the gay community a lot, went from being a hero to being a, a hate it for that and I admire a man who stands for what he believes and doesn't worry about the, the fickle, fickle uh, passions of the crowd, affections of the crowd. Now at age 71, what would you say your biggest accomplishments are? Give me three of them. Well, my biggest accomplishments are that I was a gay activist. I fought for my people and gave voice to my people on the radio. And secondly, as I expanded that to fight for rights of women, uh, to sexual freedom in general, the rights of women to have abortions, the rights of interracial couples to marry against the Vietnam War. And finally, my last great campaign was for human cloning. I really believe in human cloning. I hope to leave cells that someday my genotype will live on. It won't be me, but it'll be my later born twin. That may or may not be possible or feasible because it's against the law and it's not yet possible technically. And. Uh, I would say now I'm on a campaign, I call myself a transgender fashion activist. I've discovered how we live in this crazy world. It's just like the old days where you couldn't say the four letter words is like male and female. And through knowing transgendered people, and I don't have any gender issues really, but you realize that there aren't two genders, there are like millions of genders. Everyone is sort of a mixture of male and female. And some people have real serious identity problems in that area. So I feel that we've got to get men out of their ugly prisons of brown, black, and blue and wearing baggy clothes and being ashamed of their body. We've got to free women from pink ribbons and bows and allow them to have uh, pockets in their skirts so they don't have to carry a purse it gets them ripped off because you know clothing has been used to become a prisoner a prison for women they used to put them in hoop soaks so all they could do is be nice and pretty they couldn't work in a factory but then the World War II came along and we found out Rosie the Brewer could build as good as an airplane as any any man and the whole in my opinion the whole future of the world depends on full equality and liberation of women because when they vote they don't vote to send their husbands and their sons off to war it's the men that are the damn problem in this world not the women and i happen to be an emotional misogynist but i am a militant advocate feminist